Archie. Um, a little about myself. Uh, I've been working in games for maybe about 10 years now. Uh, generally been programming for maybe about 15, but really got serious into it in the last six to seven. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of a video game community called Glitch City, which is uh, probably one of the largest indie collectives in Los Angeles at the moment. Um, also, I've worked at a lot of places like Disney, uh, EA, and a few other places. Um, and a lot of times, uh, you go into a largely male-dominated society. Um, it's something that I've come to know and realize since ever since as a child. And uh, I've been very privileged. Uh, I grew up in New England, uh, right outside of New Haven, uh, in a town called Brantford, uh, predominantly mostly all white. Uh, but it also gave me a lot of opportunities, as such as learning to uh, how to program, uh, given access to computers, even before most computers, most households even had a computer. And it really helped me get to the point of where I am today. But one thing I keep seeing over and over is um, what I like to call uh, programmer culture. Uh, it's prevalent through all of so uh, the tech world. Uh, it's in every aspect of it. And uh, it prevents a lot of people of women and people of color from entering the industry. And I'd like to get more into it. Um, so first off, do you code bro? is usually the first question when you go. What's a programmer? Um, a programmer, there's a lot of definitions. Uh, but generally, this tends to be kind of a, uh, a mascot, if you anything. Um, it is someone that is very much uh, machismo. Uh, if you don't code this way, then get out. Uh, and it's, it's funny because programming in, in general is a, is a scientific field. It's an it's a offshoot of mathematics. Uh, also, it's, a, it's, a very, it's becoming more and more prominent with our, our world. Every aspect of our society, especially computers, is driven by computers and the ability to code means that you will have the opportunity to speak to a computer, which is ever more important as, the, as, our, as our community grows. But all too often, you have to be one of these people to become a programmer. Uh, and as I see it, the, the culture is not really changing. What it feels like from the outside, um, you don't fit in. Uh, in the end of the day, even for someone that has intimately grown up around this culture since I was a very child, uh, ever since I can remember, I've been working with computers, and that predominantly meant working with generally mostly white people uh, and what that in, in the culture itself. But even to this day, um, when I walk into most offices, I'm usually sometimes one of the first few person of color to even enter. Uh, at times when I go to conferences, I might be the only one of 100, uh, one out of 100 of a person of not color, uh, or generally even women in general is uh, such a rarity to see sometimes, but it is slowly changing. Um, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of negativity that comes with programmer culture. Uh, and this negativity probably means that if you don't fit into this culture, you will never be able to enter it. Um, and a lot, of th a lot of things means if you're not a programmer yourself, you probably won't get accepted into this community. What does this mean for uh, people that are not programmers? Uh, it means you have to set aside who you are, uh, what your experiences are to fit in. Um, and a lot of times this means making personal sacrifices that really tends to uh, affect your uh, mental stability and also your uh, just general function in life. Because uh, you, you have to eat in the end of the day. But and you've spent your whole life maybe studying and trying to understand what it means to work in computers. But uh, reality sometimes means uh, that does not matter. It only matters who you are. And sometimes that means if you're not a programmer, you might not be able to get in. 
also among programmer culture, uh, if you are not a person, uh, if you're generally a person of color, your uh, contributions are going to be led devalued. Uh, this is something that I keep seeing over and over. At, even if there is a person of color on the team, uh, most times that person's contributions are always going to be downplayed and usually never be brought to light. And this is a real problem because at times there's, we want more diversity in tech, but at times tech only chooses to show uh, the only one homogenized culture uh, that it chooses to portray. And if we want more people of tech, we have to show that there are other people like us working in that community. And therefore, we'll never understand that we might have a chance within it. And if, especially if we want kids for in the future and women to ever join this community. Currently, the numbers are dismal. Uh, places like Intel, uh, year after year, uh, ends up being largely in the higher echelons of the in the industry. There's not even any sort of representation or women of people of color. Uh, how is this? It's a cultural issue, uh, but honestly, I think this could change. But is it changing? It's not. Uh, the in general, there is uh, gatekeepers within this community. And the gatekeepers mean that if you're not one of these people, you will never be able to get in. Um, and that's the reality of how it goes. <laughs> uh, why should we care? Uh, it's just diversity. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's funny that you say that, because as I go out and speak to more people of color and women, they tend to bring in perspectives that are completely different and that you would never be able to imagine. And in, in the end of the day, it's funny because we as companies uh, or companies in general need to keep improving and growing, uh, need to come up with different ideas that helps grow, the, grow their business and eventually create more money. But the thing is, there's a lack of new perspectives coming in. And, throughout, and the only way we can get that is people with different backgrounds and experiences to come in and see angles that you would never be able to think about. <sighs> Racism, sexism, those are harsh words. Most of the time they're boiled down to microaggressions. Uh, there's been times where I've worked in uh, industries and people have said, Latinos are only good for cleaning my backyard. And these are times where it's, it's all too often we have to just uncomfortably laugh and kind of push it off to the side and be like, oh, you know, that, that, that was once in a time thing. But in the end of the day, if we don't speak up and say that is wrong in the first moment that we hear it, it's going to keep progressing and it's going to keep getting worse. Uh, because in the end of the day, it really doesn't matter because you're the minority uh, and you're, usually your perspectives are not valued. Uh, Whitney Wolf, um, the uh, VP of Tinder, recently had to resign uh, due to sexual harassment she had to receive uh, from the CEO and the creator uh, of the company. Um, in the end of the day, uh, most of the times when some sort of aggression or uh, terrible things happen, uh, usually it's the victim that has to leave uh, most of the time because it is a, a male-dominated programmer culture, and if you're not one of those people and you're the ones getting wrong, you're the ones have to go. Where does this happen? Um, it happens in every aspect of the culture. It's just not one sort of place. Uh, most of the time, even large, the large outlets of sort of technology, such as TechCrunch, uh, places like hackathons, uh, this recently, uh, this was a, a hackathon uh, sponsored by TechCrunch with some of the largest industry, uh, where one of the applications was called TitStare, uh, where it was about how long you can stare at an application for staring at boobs, uh, which I think is deplorable. And at the same time, uh, high school students were brought in to show how technology works. Um, again, uh, this is an acceptable sort of situation in the tech culture. And at the same time, it's 
completely keeping out people of any sort of diversity. Where does this happen? Uh, right now, I think the capital of it is San Francisco. Um, to some extent, uh, San Francisco is uh, a land of opportunity, but for the people and the, uh, the people that actually live in San Francisco, it's um, kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, they're in large swaths being cleared out for uh, a culture that really does not care for them or really even wants to help them out. Because in the end of the day, programmer culture only cares about other programmers. What's next? Um, even still, uh, for any person of color that is at these sort of places, I know what I had to go through, and I've known other people of the few that are there had to go through. And it's usually a momentous task. It means that you have to work harder. You have to push yourself eight times as harder as anyone else. and probably get less pay and less respect for doing it. <sighs> What's next? Uh, Silicon Beach, Los Angeles, California. Uh, I go there now, and I don't feel like I belong. Uh, some, in, I've created one of, one of the largest tech communities out there right now, and I feel like a stranger in my own land most of the time, um, which is you know, deplorable, I think, in the end of the day. Uh, but it is happening, uh, and I only see what is happening in San Francisco only going to double what's happening in Los Angeles currently. Uh, where does it all start? Um, where does this culture begin? Uh, for someone that has been to college more than once in his lifetime uh, and gotten his master's, uh, I generally tend to see it happening in a college level. Uh, it starts off kind of when you first get into your programming classes, there's a bit of machismo that happens that's uh, you gotta keep up with this code or you're out. And usually that tends to be in a very, very male dominated society, such as programming. Um, so uh, then it tends to carry on into the workplace. Uh, most times, uh, the people, the higher echelons of any industry is going to be dominated by this homogenized culture. And that means the people, although you might have the same skills and the same sort of uh, background as someone else of, that is uh, of this much homogenized culture, it does not mean you'll get the job. And all too often, uh, it, it, it happens, and the numbers really don't lie because of it. And day to day, for someone that has been to so many technology places, I see so many people of color and women with interesting backgrounds and such interesting, uh, interesting, uh, sorry, um, interesting uh, educations. But still, there is a lack of uh, acceptance. What happens when you do get hired? <laughs> uh, Usually, you have to uh, change yourself in a lot of ways uh, to fit into that sort of society. Uh, most of the time, and if you go against the grain of it, you're going to be ousted no matter what. And that means putting up with a lot of things. Um, how do we change it? Uh, in the end of the day, programmers are not the ones that are going to ever change this uh, because it's not within their purview. It's never going to be. Uh, it has to be you, me, I. Uh, so what I have to say is I think you should go out, try to change the next generation. And there's been times where I've even had spoken with the creators of Indicade where I've said, voice my con concerns of how uh, there is just a lack of diversity in this, in this industry. And it's, it's agreed upon that it exists, but it's not going to be changed within our generation. And that's the truth of it. Uh, but it has to be changed with the next or the one after. And that only means by the few that are us here has to go really out of their way to help the next, com next generation that's coming up. Um, because without it, we're not going to really ever have diversity. And I don't see the numbers that ever changing until we choose to do it. So 
for those people that are in Los Angeles, there's multiple places that you could do this. Uh, there, or if not, just go out and do it yourself. Uh, I personally have found the um, hacker spaces in Watts for, uh, ro for children to learn robotics. Um, also, I work extensively with a group called Urban TXD out of USC to help kids learn programming within uh, the inner city, which is, I think is super important. Um, again, you, really, if you're a person of color or a woman in this industry, you have to ask yourself, how can I go above and beyond and help my own people like me? Because in the end of the day, diversity is going to create more opportunities. Uh, it's going to create more business. It's going to create more uh, places that no one has ever thought about. And even still, uh, teaching a, a programming class in Watts recently, I came in with a perspective of these kids only wanted to make video games or they only wanted to do this. And I was blown away because my perceptions were completely uh, turned on its head. Uh, kids came up with applications that uh, was able to help feed their community, which is something that I could have never even thought about. And it, was, it, had to, it could have only come out of from the community itself. So in the end of the day, uh, all I have to say is, if you really want to change, if you really have to, if you want to see something different, you have to come out and actively change it yourself. Because in the end of the day, programmer culture is everywhere, and it's pervasive. And you, there is no acceptance at the moment. Uh, that's it. <laughs>